people have, and my family sometimes has, an inflated sense of what a mayor is and what I can actually do. Um, you know, people call me about water bills for the county water bills. They call me about, I had somebody actually call me on Tuesday wanting to know if I as mayor could help them with an extension on their taxes, their federal income taxes. <laughs> not, not, not joking. Um, so it's, it's, I'm just a guy, I'm a citizen. I don't have that much power authority. I don't even get to vote unless there's a tie. Well, you know, we, I work hard at what I do and I spend a lot of time down at City Hall trying to make things happen. And we go to a lot of events and festivals as a family. Uh, we go to, you know, to the opening day at Murphy Candler. We do um, any type of you know, food truck events. I'm always going to those things. And it's funny when, when I'm <clears throat> coming to the security line or where people are letting you into an event, I sometimes have to remind a police officer or, or the person who's there, I'm the mayor, I need to get in, I've got to make a speech, or I've got to come up to the stage to bring some people on. And so, uh, you know, sometimes my kids will say, he's the mayor, he's the mayor, let him in, let him in. And so my kids have gotten used to that. And last week, we were down in Disney at the Magic Kingdom. <laughs> and, and we were in line for... Uh, to see Elsa and Anna and uh, all, the, all the princesses. And if, as, you, as you could guess, Disney was quite packed that day. It was Wednesday. And um, my six-year-old, Liza, um, was standing next to me, next to the ticket, you know, the person standing at the gate. There's a security and a guy who's saying you can come in or not. Daddy, just tell them you're the mayor. They'll let you right in. We don't have to wait in any. And I had her tell her my authority did not extend to the Magic Kingdom. So... I appreciate my children, and they think that, you know, that Daddy's doing a great thing, and I appreciate their respect for that. But what I want to talk about uh, tonight is uh, where we were, where we are, what we are, and where we're going. We've been a city for exactly 849 days. That's how long Brookhaven has been open as an official operating city. In less than 1,000 days, we have accomplished so much. I'm excited to be able to share some of those accomplishments with you tonight and to give you a glimpse of what the future of Brookhaven looks like by letting you know where we were, what we are, and where we're going. We are safe. And I see many of our police officers here, Chief Yandura and our new Deputy Chief Juan Grillon. Juan, wherever you are, I saw him earlier. Um, we now have our own police officers keeping our neighborhood safe. We have 69 police officers on patrol and a new 16,000 square foot police station, state of the art, on Beaufort Highway. This gives our officers easy access to the rest of the city. The police have also partnered with Villa Sonoma, right over here, the condominiums, to create a mini precinct, a place where citizens can go, get a police report, uh, find out about security issues in their neighborhood, or just to get updates from our police department. So we have our Beaufort Highway precinct. We'll have one up here at Villa Sonoma. Still working out the details, and also we're going to have one, we're planning to have one at our city hall in the middle of the city. So anywhere in Brookhaven, you'll just be a couple miles from a police precinct if you want, need to meet one of our officers and get some help in some way on some issue. Um, we're also, um, when we incorporated, I guess in 2012, uh, the county uh, police department was only providing us about two to three officers per shift in, in Brookhaven at any given time. Now in the city of Brookhaven, at any given time, there are 10 to 12 police officers on patrol in our city. And uh, we, we got a, we're involved in the North Metro, Metro SWAT team. We've initiated a canine program with our canines. I know some of you know who they are, Grizz and Dano. Should be a picture, there's one of them there. Uh, one of the ones that uh, found the bracelet the lady lost at the Cherry Blossom Festival. The lady came in the middle of the night uh, during, uh, over the weekend of the Cherry Blossom Festival and panicked that she had lost a bracelet and came up to uh, one of our officers, happened to be there working the overnight shift with his dog. She, he smelled the lady's hand, and 15, 10 minutes later, the dog alerted, and there was the bracelet in the middle of the field. And just an amazing, yeah, a little hand for that. <clears throat> so thank you, Grizz and Dano. D Gr was it Grizz the one that got stung by all the yellow jackets with the officer? Yeah, yes, they've made full, both the officer and Grizz have made a full recovery, so thank you. Um, also, there's some numbers the police department has uh, generated since startup. If you just look, they've taken almost 9,000 incident reports, over 4,000 accident reports, 2,000 arrests, 454 wanted persons located. Now, that, that statistic there 
is something that, uh, you know, you don't want to have people with outstanding warrants running around your city. And I know our police do a good job of finding those folks. And that's, those are the, be the, the kind of people that commit more crime and are dangerous. So that's a high number, but I'm glad that they're taking care of that problem. And we've had just under two, 300 DUIs uh, that our police have been involved with. So we hear, I hear great things about our police department. I know our community appreciates them. So um, it, it's just the comfort of having our own police department as a father with, with kids knowing that we have a quick response time, we have our own 911 service now. I think that's, uh, you can't measure the, the gratitude and the comfort that we have as a family for our police department. So I'd like you all to give these, these guys a hand. <clears throat> our police are also actively involved in the community. Uh, they've started an explorers program that in, invites young adults to come and learn about how law enforcement careers can be challenging and, and do it in a hands-on environment. Our explorers get to go on police ride-alongs, they get to ride in the car with the officers, they get to work traffic and crowd control for events, and they learn leadership skills. So in concert with that, the Brookhaven Police Department for Adults is also starting its first Citizen Police Academy next month, or later this month. Anyone who lives or works in Brookhaven is invited to apply for this free 10-week course, and it'll give the students who apply an inside look at how the department operates. So sign up for that. I think it starts at the end of the month and goes for 10 weeks after that. Uh, and the department has also been successful in obtaining grants for bulletproof vests, a heroin drug antidote, which I think they saved their first life not long ago with that uh, drug antidote that they keep in their cars, and tourniquets and holsters for all the officers. And thanks to the citizen, the volunteers, and the friends of Brookhaven, our police have life-saving AEDs in their patrol cars. And they've also already saved a life with those AEDs. So thank you to the Friends of Brookhaven for all that volunteer work getting the AEDs and the patrol cars. We also have our own fire marshal now to, con to conduct inspections for businesses, making it more efficient and less costly, and giving a, a more re regimented time schedule for when those inspections can occur. Our police this year have an operating and capital budget of $7.7 .7 $7 dollars. Can you have imagined this just two years ago? We'd have our own police department with nearly 70 officers and a $7.7 .7 million budget. That's not just numbers. That's, that's going to police on the streets, not to a big bureaucracy. So to me, that's one of the most uh, fascinating and gratifying accomplishments the city has made. And also, in November, we became Georgia's first city to sign the Not Buying It Pledge. That when we joined a task force to fight child sex trafficking. That means that city staff and officials, including the elected officials, have all undergone a seminar training of about four hours to being trained to recognize the signs of sex trafficking. And I want to thank uh, Councilman Gebbia for your leadership on that, Joe. We, we appreciate what you've done. It's a very uh, sensitive issue. It's a shocking issue. And to know that it's, it's happened in Brookhaven and it happens in the metro area is a wake-up call to all of us. So we thank you for your leadership. And also Greg Chevalier, I saw you here as well with the Street Grace program. Thank you, Greg, for the work you're doing with that as well. <clears throat> we have a better community. We have built our own sidewalks and made traffic improvements. We're installing intelligent traffic systems, filling in the gaps in our sidewalk network and enacting a bike trail and pedestrian plan to make Brookhaven a walkable, pedestrian-friendly, community that enhances everyone's quality of life. Prior to incorporation, the county in constructed no new sidewalks in 2011 and 2012. In 2012, the year of incorporation re referendum, the county paved four miles of city streets. Last year alone, we paved more than double that with eight and a half miles. You can, that's a huge amount of paving. We got more to do this year. Our public works department completed construction of over a mile of new sidewalks in 2014, in addition to that eight and a half miles of paving. We completed improvements to the Ashford Dunwoody Johnson's Ferry intersection that has significantly improved traffic flow and reduced travel delay. And I want to thank Rebecca Chase Williams for helping get that started. She dusted off an old plan from P Top, and you know, we all sat in that traffic. I sat in some of it today, but I, it's a noticeably better, and I want to thank you for your leadership on that issue. I know a lot of you thank her as well. The department also installed the first re rapid reflecting beacon pedestrian signals in the Ashford Dunwoody and Johnson's Ferry area. Those are the crosswalks you see that have the flashing yellow lights so that pedestrians can safely cross the street. 
And that's been a big uh, priority of mine as well because I have kids. And again, when we vacation down in Sarasota, the respect for pedestrians there is just paramount. And I'd like to see the same thing here. If we really want a walkable city, we've got to make it safe for people to cross our busy intersections. And these pedestrian beacons are part of that, part of solving that problem. The Public Works has also retimed the traffic signals at North Druid Hills and Roxborough Road, which have improved traffic flow in that area. And they're still tweaking that, but it has improved it as well. And our Public Works Department, with the Richard Meehan and Bennett White, has a $4.7 million budget, and they'll invest at least $3 million of that on capital projects to make your life better. So traffic is a big issue. We're working at it one step at a time. We're hammering away at that issue, and we'll keep doing it. And in case you missed the big news, Google Fiber is coming, maybe as early as next year. In January, Google announced that Brookhaven made the final cut for cities to get the new fiber optic network that will deliver internet and TV connectivity 100 times faster than what we have at present. Areas had to be incorporated to get that service, so you would not have access to this service if we were not a city. We have great parks as well. I see Jerry's here somewhere. I saw him eating some food earlier, but there you are, Jerry. Jerry's our park and recs director. Um, he's a big part of this, making our parks better and more enjoyable. We have new signs that more clearly convey park rules, and I've seen them everywhere, and they are a help. Because one of the things that you have to do in some of the parks where there were some security issues, you have to establish boundaries and rules right off the bat in order to make the park safe for younger kids and other folks to enjoy it. So thank you for making that a priority, Jerry. You'll see new gym floors in our renovated Linwood and Briarwood Parks Recreation Centers. New bathrooms at the Briarwood Park Playground. The pavilion at Blackburn Park has been renovated. All city playgrounds are being resurfaced. And you'll see new benches and trash cans everywhere at every park. The stadium at Murphy Candler will be renovated this year. There'll be new steps and a bridge at Briarwood Park. Tennis courts will be resurfaced. Trails will be added and improved. The pools will be repaired resurfaced and repainted this year. And individual master plans for all of our parks will be completed as well. DeKalb County didn't invest too much in our parks prior to incorporation. They couldn't, it's, it's, we understand that was, there were some issues with budget, budgets back in 2011. But just this year, our Brookhaven Parks Department has quintupled what was previously spent. They have a budget of $4.7 million. And again, $3 million of that is going to park capital improvements 4.7 million for our parks department alone that's just an amazing figure and that's your tax dollars at work and to help the city implement these these and future improvements in our parks i have appointed and the council has approved a parks advisory committee these nine citizens will work with our parks and recreation department to help set priorities and provide a vision for our parks these are your parks and who best but citizens to help form and guide that vision. Our goal is to make our park system one of the best in the Southeast, and I'm grateful that these residents volunteer to help us get there. So thank you, Parks and Rec Committee. We're also fiscally sound. I and the council recently allocated monies turned over from the county for our 2014 host funding. Host funds are generated from sales taxes, 80% of the host funds are distributed as property tax relief in the form of tax credits to homeowners, and the remaining 20% goes to capital projects. We utilize this revenue to make those improvements that I'm talking about to our parks, roads, and sidewalks. In total, we received $6.4 million from our portion of the sales tax revenue last year. We anticipate similar revenue, if not more, in 2015 as well. We're very excited that you, the taxpayers of Brookhaven, will see their hard-earned tax dollars go to local projects and needed infrastructure improvements that you want. We're careful with budgeting. We've cut property taxes two years in a row. We have a $4 million reserve, and yet we're still able to allocate these funds. Thank you again, Brookhaven taxpayers. It's a big, big accomplishment. But as we know, <clears throat> we have a long way to go in some areas. It takes money, time, and dedication by our staff to make things happen. Unlike many cities our size, we ha that have seven to nine employees per 1,000 residents, we get the same job done with slightly more than two employees per 1,000 residents. That is part of the promise of cityhood, less bureaucracy and less bloat. 
we are proving it can and is being done the right way. That is quite a feat, and our police and our city staff work hard each day to deliver the best in customer service. So thank you, city staff. And we are transparent. This meeting tonight is being streamed live. You go to our website and you can stream this, this speech tonight. In fact, all of our meetings are streamed live online. You can go to our website and watch these meetings as well as past archived meetings. And again, I'm starting up a Walk with the Mayor, which gives you and me the opportunity to walk and talk in your neighborhood and discuss issues that are important to you. And as always, we have Mondays with the Mayor, and they're held continuously throughout the year. And hundreds of citizens have utilized both these opportunities for civic dialogue and engagement. But residents can really just come talk to me anytime, not just Mondays. And believe me, people do just show up anytime and they'll come, you know, <laughs> come see me, sit in my office and talk. So it's not just limited to Mondays. So come on down to City, city Hall, get off at the third floor, and you won't even have to knock because my office still doesn't have a door. <laughs> it's hard sometimes, but it, I like the fact it's got to come on in, there's no door. We are also growing. Now, two major property owners just this past year asked to join Brookhaven, and we welcomed them. In December, we, we approved that request from Children's Healthcare of Atlanta and Executive Park. We extended our boundary across I-85. These companies will provide a gateway to that side of our city, and they will add to our tax base while not costing you, the taxpayer, a dime. They will bring thousands of high-paying jobs to Brookhaven and create demand for new and better housing on the Beaufort Highway corridor. And although we are growing, we are working to ensure that growth is smart and done in a way that's best for our residents and businesses. Neighborhood protection is a key feature of that growth. Because of our rapid success, we are under a barrage of proposals for new development. While Brookhaven has approved only one new apartment complex over at Oglethorpe University, we are constantly faced with applications for new multifamily development. And as you can see from the numerous deferrals on some of these new proposals, we are working hard to protect our neighborhoods and don't just rubber stamp new development for the sake of growth. Our job is to find a balance with new development while maintaining the reasons our city is so great. Wonderful single family neighborhoods that deserve protection along with the quality of life that we all hold so dear. Now, while there are and there were and still are growing pains in the community development department, because of the sheer volume of new single family home construction, we need a plan. And that's why we recently completed our comprehensive plan, our transportation plan, our parks and rec plan, and our Buford Highway Improvement Plan. The comprehensive plan will give the city direction over the next 20 years, neighborhood by neighborhood. And thank you for Marie for heading up that process and getting it done in the way that we know you could, so we appreciate that. Our transportation and parks plans will let residents know what to expect, while the Buford Highway Improvement Plan has the goal of revitalizing that corridor that is so full of potential. Improving Buford Highway is the key to the future success of our city. Now, remember back in the corporation uh, battle, many people didn't understand why this area was included in the Brookhaven boundary map. It had so much poverty, substandard housing, and crime, and it was still included in our map. Let me tell you, what happens on the Buford Highway corridor affects the Druid Hills corridor, which affects the Peachtree corridor, which affects the Ashford Dunwoody corridor. With our vastly pr improved policing, our code enforcement, and Buford Highway Improvement Plan, we have already changed the lives of the folks that live on the Buford Highway corridor. Where once residents were af afraid to call, much less talk to the police, now families on Buford Highway know our officers by their first name. The students can now walk to school every morning safely and out of the mud because we've improved the sidewalks and we have a pedestrian improvement plan. Living conditions have improved immensely because of our vigorous apartment inspection program. We're going to continue to change the lives of the people, change the quality of life of the people who live on that corridor for the better. We're going to prove unequivocally that incorporation was the best thing that ever happened to Buford Highway. And we are fun. We're a fun city. Yes, I like to, we, we, hey. we are fun. I think I'm fun. Y'all look fun. <laughs> okay. Uh, we have events like the food trucks, Christmas tree lightings, and Easter egg hunts, 
Help us grow as a community. We have our popular food truck event, which returns in May, by the way. Thank you again to Rebecca for bringing that to us, the food trucks. We had more than 300 people show up for our very first Easter egg hunt. Uh, and some 10,000 people came out to our inaugural Cherry Blossom Festival. In fact, our hotel motel tax pays for events like the Cherry Blossom Festival. This year alone, that revenue will bring in over $1.8 million, and it is not part of the general fund. And also, Brookhaven has among the lowest hotel motel tax rates in the metro area. And it gets, generates that much money. So thank you to the Hyatt and Villa Christina and all the hotels we have in Brookhaven for helping pay for our festivals and events like that. These are all accomplishments we should all be proud of. Improving our quality of life in Brookhaven was the overriding goal of incorporation. And we've made great strides in achieving just that. And we're just getting started. In the next thousand days, you can expect to see more community building act activities in our parks. We have Bark in the Park coming up. Touch a Truck, which I didn't know what that was before it was in the, you know, somebody told me to put that in the speech. It's a public, it's a par it's a public works project where kids can come play with the public works trucks and the, the graders and the things that fix the streets. And also, so, it's something, yeah, it's called Touch a Truck. I don't know why, but that's what it's called. I guess Richard came up with that name. I'm not sure. But uh, we're also having something called a Bluesgrass Festival this fall, where there'll be blues music, bluegrass music, and Americana music, car show, small batch bourbon tasting, which Rebecca's going to be in charge of that portion of it. We'll make, <laughs> make sure everybody stays in line. Uh, and barbe a barbecue competition. So we're going to try to get Big Green Egg involved. So if you're a barbecue master, you think, come on down. We'll see if we can get you a prize. Um, there are going to be more trails, more parks, new sidewalks, and we'll start connecting them. We'll make the city walkable with our complete streets program. And here's another exciting uh, issue that uh, Councilman Madison has been working on is a new school. We're working on establishing the Brookhaven Innovation Academy, an independent charter school based right here in our city. And that's a big deal, folks, because education is economic development. And when you, when you see the state of education in DeKalb County, you know, I think uh, Superintendent Thurman has kind of stanched the flow of blood there. I think he's stabilized things, but we can't sit around and wait for things to just happen. We've got to make things happen on our own. And I want to thank Councilman Madison for his leadership on that issue. We're trying to get our Brookhaven Innovation Academy started. Thanks, Bays. Uh, we're also going to have gateway monuments built at, at all the four or five major intersections where you come into our city. And we're going to have enhancements to the martyr wall. You know that rusty martyr wall on Peachtree? We're going to have some painting done to that and make it look a lot nicer. We're going to replace all the park monument signs. Those are the big granite signs you see. We're going to probably keep the granite and just dress it up a little bit to save some money. But those are all going to be redone and replaced. We're going to have a convention and visitors bureau set up that will work to attract more guests to our hotels, which in turn means more visitors and more jobs. Children's health care, which I mentioned earlier, will begin construction on its new headquarters, and that will bring more new jobs. We're going to have a change in the landscape on Buford Highway. Part of our Buford Highway Improvement Plan is improving the way that the highway looks so that we can attract uh, more new business and new housing. We're going to be finding a new location, new and permanent location for City Hall. Now, I'm not one to think we need some big Taj Mahal, but if some, somebody wants to build a building and we can lease it to us, we'll look at doing it. But uh, well, there's several options open, and we're going to find a place to have our city hall permanently because our lease is only for five years, I believe, on the, in the building that we're in now. And that's not all. Stay tuned, and we'll let you know, and you let us know what you'd like to see. I'd like to close with this. <clears throat> I listed a lot of improvements tonight and a lot of programs and a lot of spending of your tax dollars. But all these things don't just happen. It's not the magic kingdom, like I mentioned before, where you just wave a wand and it happens. There are people actually making these things work. It takes the application of resources to ideas to make our quality of life change for the better. The city staff works tirelessly to make all these ideas come to fruition. Marie, Ben, Chief, Ben Song, Bennett, Richard, Susan, Brad and all the folks here, you are wonderful, you're wonderful city staff employees and you are dedicated to your job. So I want to thank you all. So we give the city staff a round of applause. <clears throat> there are 
also nearly 100 citizens who volunteer their time to serve on the various volunteer committees, like the Planning Commission. I see Stan Siegel here. I see, if you're on one of our volunteer boards of whatever type, if you've served on a steering committee, please stand up. Please, a wave. There, there's some. Thank you. Yes. Thank you all. <clears throat> They're on the parks, the new Parks and Rec Committee, the ZBA, the Alcohol Board, the Construction Review Board, the Martis the Marta Citizens Review Board, uh, the Park steering committees, the transportation plan steering committees, the comp plan steering committees, all these folks are citizens who volunteer their time to help make what we're doing and what's been up on the screen tonight happen. So thank you again. But finally, there are also some other part-time employees who make around $12,000 a year and who spend countless years, hours, well, maybe years too. <laughs> yeah, it has been a couple of years. Reading, researching, emailing, meeting until midnight, attending events, taking calls, answering complaints, taking criticism, etc. Without these people, there would be no Brookhaven police cars patrolling the streets. There'd be no new sidewalks. There'd be no new park improvements. The paving wouldn't have gotten done. All of these things that I've talked about tonight and you've heard about and you've seen on the screen tonight, none of this would happen had these people just stayed at home and said, let somebody else do it. It, it, it is these people who have the monumental responsibility of applying the resources to the idea that is the city of Brookhaven. So who I'm talking about is the Brookhaven City Council. So I'd like for all of you to stand and just get a round of applause because you deserve it. <laughs> You're truly public servants and I thank you. And folks, I thank you for coming tonight. I've given a lot of information out. I enjoy being the mayor of Brookhaven, and I appreciate when you come up to me in the store and grab me by the elbow and say, hey, you're doing a great job, or hey, what's going on over here? Why is this happening? So, it, you know, it it's, comes with the territory. We go grocery shopping. My wife's like, just go hide on the corner so nobody stops you. <laughs> no, that's, you know, I, I, I enjoy it. I enjoy listening to people because I like to hear if we're doing something right, if we're doing something wrong, I want to hear it from you. So. I appreciate you as Brookhaven citizens and as the taxpayers of Brookhaven for making this city what it is. So thank you. And thank you all for coming. Appreciate it. Mayor Davis, Mayor Davis we, it, we're not going to get off that easy. We have some written questions. If you wouldn't mind. You sure I can't go off? Just kidding. No. You're going to have to answer a few. You, you, you ended way early, so okay. we, we don't want to rob these people of, well, the, of an extra 20 paid. minutes of hearing your voice. So. Are you mad at me for ending early? No, I didn't think so. Ten minutes for questions? I've heard there's been state of the city speeches that have gone on for an hour and a half, and I, I know to stay away from that. So I've been known to say a few words in public myself. We can yes. have a nice battle if you like. Yes. Um, so I do have some questions here, and I, I think we should at least let the folks who put the effort into writing them down um, have the chance to ask them. So first comes from Nancy Jester, DeKalb County Commissioner representing District 1 in the back in the red. Um, and I, thought, I think this is a great question. Uh, Nancy has, has stated that she is in favor of the uh, incorporation of uh, cities into Cap County. She thinks it's good for the county as a whole, as much of her district is already municipalized. But she would like to ask you how you see Brookhaven as making a positive impact on the quality of life of the rest of Cap County. Well, you know, as Brookhaven, uh, Brookhaven citizen and resident as the mayor, I have... I've been, I was born in DeKalb County at, at the Emory Hospital. I've lived here my entire life. So I'm a proud DeKalb County citizen. And I'm proud of our elected officials who are doing the right thing in DeKalb County. We have Commissioner Rader here, and we have Commissioner Jester, and we're also represented by Commissioner Gannon. So I, I've seen a change in the past couple years in direction a little bit. And I, I think that um, Brookhaven being strong and doing the services and taking on the, the services that we take on, I think they're going to help the county focus a little bit more on those things that the county does well. That's the larger you know, infrastructure type uh, uh, services. Water, I hope they get a handle on the water bill, but I don't think there's a big problem with our, with our water infrastructure. We have a great fire department. You know, we have actually a great judicial system as well. I'm, I'm proud to go into a DeKalb courtroom anytime. We have great judges. The, cl the clerk's great. Uh, we have, um, you know, just so many wonderful things. I went to Chambly High School. Chambly High School is still a good school. And we have great schools in Brookhaven. Uh, so the success of Brookhaven is a success for DeKalb County. So 
as we've gone along in our incorporation, as the incorporation battle is over, I think the county sees that we can be a benefit to them just like they can be a benefit to us. And CEO May, uh, we've got a great partnership with him. He's, he's, his staff is accessible. I know Marie talks with them weekly. And uh, he's doing a good job. He's doing what he can to make things better. And uh, we're, we look forward to working with Commissioner Rader and Commissioner Jester and Gannon on things that will help Brookhaven and the North Metro area in general and the county in general. So I think our success is the county's success and vice versa. And so that's my answer to that. Thank you. Um, the, uh, this, this next question comes from Fred Bazzuto from uh, Prudential Financial, who is a Murphy Park, uh, I'm sorry, Candler Park resident. Um, are there any plans to provide more ample and organized parking at Murphy Candler Park? Well, that's a good question. Our, our, um, our, our Parks and Rec master plan initially came out. This was the, uh, the consultants who came up with this. They had, they had floated the idea without our knowledge of a parking deck over at Murphy Candler Park, which was a little funny. We, you know, that was something that was rejected quite quickly by the, the council and by the neighborhood. But I don't see a huge increase in the number of parking spaces at Murphy Candler Park. I don't think that's appropriate necessarily. I see us capturing more spaces where there are already gravel, gravel already exists, restriping, making some improvements to the parking that we have there. Maybe we can get another 65 or 75 spaces. But other things we can do to kind of help with the parking and traffic situation over there, you know, my kids play, Max plays football and baseball down there. My daughters play softball and Lydia cheerleads and so does Liza. So we're down there quite a bit. And um, one thing I'm talking to the, the Little League and the Football League about is carpooling. In that, you know, because we actually, there are actually drafts of teams in the, um, uh, for the leagues. They, they draft players just like they would in the NFL or the Major League Baseball. And so I am trying to get a proposal together whereby half the team will be drafted on ability, the other half of the team will be drafted on where you live so that we can get kids. I, I just, it just pains me to see five SUVs leaving my neighborhood to all go to the same place at the same time. There's no reason why we can't have a carpool program that's kind of attached to how those leagues are made up. I think you could probably reduce the traffic and the parking problem by 20, 30 percent if you just had more carpooling. It's just, you, there are just too many people dropping off one kid that live right next to each other. So that's another thing. Well, there's, we have to look at the parking issue from several different angles. Yes, we need a few more spaces and we need to capture what we have and, and do some engineering, Richard can get on that with parks to try to make it a little bit um, more manageable. But I think we have to look outside the box a little bit and realize that there are some things we could be doing that are simple that the lease could help us with that will, will reduce that problem of congestion. Thank you. Um, this is an interesting question. Before comes you up. get to that, I yes, forgot, sir. I forgot. We have one of our Brookhaven Municipal Court judges here too. And our, or both of our, both of our, <laughs> sorry, Laura, you just surprised. Should they not be sitting next to each other? They should, yeah. <laughs> I want, I want you two to stand up, Laura Stevenson and Jonathan Grenade. Thank, thank you. They are, I hear, you know, I'm an attorney, and I hear from the defense bar and the prosecutorial bar about the quality of our judges in Brookhaven, and I, get, I hear high marks about you. I know there's y'all have already gotten some kind of award previously, but uh, y'all are doing a great job, and I thank you for your service. That's a big deal to me, so I didn't want to finish tonight without having recognizing how great you too are. Thank you. <laughs> thank you as well. Laura serves on the board of the Chamber of Commerce with us, so thank you for your service there as well. Um, this question comes from uh, married entrepreneurs here in uh, Brookhaven, Skip and Nancy Plesnarski, who own 188 Fine Men's Salon in town Brookhaven. Um, their question is, what incentive programs does the city have in place to offer to new businesses to come to Brookhaven? I know that's something that Marie has mentioned in the past. Maybe you could elaborate on some of those uh, programs. Well, um, you know, as part of our um, being able to remain as elected officials in Brookhaven, we have to undergo training and seminars on what you should be doing as an elected official. And I uh, took uh, economic development seminars the past two years, and one of the things that I know that we're working on is getting a package together on what space is available in Brookhaven, what our tax rate is, what, kind, what our demographics are, a whole plan so that when, when a new company is looking to locate to Brookhaven, the, um, the, the State Economic Development Commission will get transmitted from us a, a packet of what, we, what is available in Brookhaven, what we have, and what we can offer. So, um, you know, I do ribbon cuttings all the time. I know the council does as well. 
we're, we're going to be, it was a little early for us to get an economic development director. I know Dunwoody just has one and uh, Sandy Springs has one. We'll be doing that as well, but we wanted to get some of the major things done first before we stepped out with that. So we'll be doing that in the future to kind of help coordinate uh, economic development in the city of Brookhaven. But your ideas will be helpful as well. So let us know, email me, come to meetings, ask questions like that. Um, this, if we don't mind, we'll take one more. Go ahead. Um, Shane Weber, who is the a partner in the joint, which is a chiropractic, a walking chiropractic uh, shop. He has an office in. It's not a medical marijuana shop. No. Okay. Are we, I heard we're getting one. I heard we're getting one of those. In District one. <laughs> I heard you're a huge supporter of that. <laughs> Parties at Rebecca's house. <laughs> Shane, Shane actually, was, what's very interesting about Shane is that he's, he started a business in Town Brookhaven. He has a, uh, the joint in Town Brookhaven. Mm -hmm. And he also happened to open up a second location in the newly annexed uh, Brighton Park. We're calling it Brighton Park. Yeah. And his question is along the lines of um, what, what plan do you have in place to support those businesses in the newly uh, annexed portion of Brookhaven? Well, that's your job, isn't it, Todd? The chamber. <laughs> We're going to work together on that, Mayor. Yes. <laughs> You've got the checkbook. No, hey, well, one of the things we can do to support new businesses is that when you move into the city of Brookhaven with a new business, you get a three mil tax cut on your business property. So that's the number one thing. Financially, it's cheaper to have a business in, in, in the city of Brookhaven than it is in unincorporated cab. Um, Secondly, uh, you know, I've, know, I've met with uh, some uh, Shane from the joint, some other business uh, owners over in town Brookhaven, and they came, they came to me a few months ago about uh, a sign, our sign ordinance, trying to let us know that there, there was some uh, a, a gap in how our ordinance was written that was kind of hindering how they um, did their, had their sign and advertising at, at their businesses. So we work on issues like that. We want to support our businesses, and, and I'd like to hear more from them. I'd like for them to come do Mondays with the mayor. You know, that's, I, I'd say 85 to 90 percent of my Mondays with the mayor are just citizens coming in to, to uh, talk to me about issues. But I'd like to have more business owners come in and utilize that. Come meet with me. Come meet with the city manager. Meet with your council member. Um, we're we're going to do anything and everything we can to make sure that we're a business-friendly climate. And if there are things that aren't business-friendly, that are inhibiting the free market, we need to know about it. And um, I, I just, uh, I'm a small business owner myself, and I know what issues affect me, and I think we're trying to make sure, you know, when we started off, one of the things that was important to me is we took our code book that we adopted from the county, and I said, I want to make that book smaller. I want to repeal legislation. So we've done a few things to repeal some law that was unnecessary and was, made no sense, and we're, we're going to continue to keep looking at our code. But um, I, I look forward to continue working with the business community and thank you for opening up a second shop in Brookhaven. I don't know if you had planned it to be there. Maybe we sucked it over and, got, and you were <laughs> there. But I hope you've had a good experience so far. And I know our fire marshal, that's one thing that will help you with, when you're setting up your new business. Because that was one thing we heard um, pretty early on was that um, the fire marshal issue in DeKalb County was that you'd get one fire marshal come inspect one day and then another one would come another day and they'd have totally different opinions and interpretations on what you could or couldn't be doing. It was costing not only money, but time for our businesses that we're trying to open. So that's what led to us getting our own fire marshal. We don't have a fire department, but we have a, a great uh, fire marshal. He's down in the basement of City Hall. He loves the Caribbean. I think his family's from the Caribbean. And you walk into his office, and it smells like a coconut pina colada. It's just <laughs> suntan lotion. There's Caribbean music. There's palm tree. And the, he's just come visit our fire marshal someday if you want to relax for about 15 minutes. It's a really... A nice uh, environment. Anything else? Are you done? If you want one, with that question, yes. If you want one more, I'll do one more. There is a uh, question that was submitted anonymously. Oh, oh. This is actually not a bad. This is an easy one. I would ask it if it was. You know. um, what plans does the city have to invest in a uh, first-class venue, uh, performing venue arts, entertainment, sports, etc., that could attract larger uh, larger, more uh, uh, interesting acts or to, to host uh, other events? Well, we've made a deal with the Hawks and we're opening up a 20,000 seat arena right there at Blackburn Park. <laughs> <laughs> no, no uh, that's a good question because um, as a music guy, I, there are a couple parks in the city that, that would lend themselves well to a small, you know, 
um, not a built stadium, but you know, on a hillside where you maybe just put in some concrete seating and leave the natural environment there where you could get a thousand seat little amphitheater or something like that. And Brookhaven Park and Blackburn Park are the two places that I've thought would be a good options for that. There is, I have a lot of calls from folks about wanting a place like a mini, mini Chastain that's, you know, maybe a, a, a quarter of the fifth of the size of Chastain that would uh, uh, offer another opportunity for community building. And I hear that all over the city, how much people appreciate the community building we're doing with the food trucks and all of our festivals and events. And we've never had this before. A lady came up to me tonight just before the speech and said, you know, I've lived here 20 years and these, these events you're having, just giving us this sense of community is really a huge benefit to the city that I never, you know, that we, we never thought would happen. So we're excited about those types of things. And I think a venue like that will help just build that, uh, uh, str uh, that, that com sense of community. I will have to let Stan, Stan's a, you know, the Hampton Hall neighborhood is a, you know, the kind of a the watchdog on Blackburn Park and we'll make sure that it passes muster. But I think a small uh, natural earth uh, amphitheater that's utilized on limited times and a limited basis would be a good thing for our city. So excited about exploring that further. Anything else? All right. Yes, ma'am. Last one, Mary. You're the last person to do a question, so I'm happy that it's you. Uh, right. Right. Well, yeah, we got some commissioners here. You can corner on that. Um, we are. I know that Marie has been, and our city attorney has been going back and forth with DeKalb County. It's the legal department that we've been going back and forth with, uh, trying to get that. Uh, other 10 acres for Brookhaven Park. It's been a thorn in our side. We're really getting a little, starting to get a little bit upset about the delay in having our park become our park. Uh, it's, it's a 10 acre park and a 10 acre park, but it's really one park. It's 20 acres and it's, a, it's been a park for its entire existence. There is a, the cab services center as you know is there, so that's not really part of the park. It just sits on park property. And um, there's really no reason why we are having delays and um, we're not having that park transferred. I don't know what we can do, but we can talk to Commissioner Rader and Commissioner Jester about that after the meeting. I hope you all will as well. Uh, we're continuing negotiations on that, but um, we're, you know, very, very frustrated with that issue. And I don't want to get into it too much more, but we really want that park to be whole and the neighbors expect it and our citizens expect it. We've paid taxes for that park for 50 years. It, the law says it comes to us when we become a city for $100 an acre, and we expect to get that park, and we want it. And um, um, that's all I have to say about that. But it's, it's a big issue. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate it. Ladies and gentlemen, I, would, I will tell you that if you have not had the opportunity to speak with the mayor um, and be really accepted by him you just haven't approached him if you feel that you need to I mean you've got a friend at City Hall I know it sounds as corny as it sounds he, he is very approachable and um, he will hear you out and he will tell you give you that answer and a lot of times when you're in a leadership role and you know this sometimes you have to give people the honest answers and they're not maybe the best but in the long run they might make the most sense uh, for 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 everyone you're not going to be able to please everybody every time, right? We all, anyone have kids? You all got to kind of do the same thing. There, you got kids? Good job, buddy. You're starting them early. Um, I did want to uh, thank Judy, Chris, Dr. Judy Christensen in the back from Brookhaven Children's Dentistry. She did guess that Vinny and I are actually from a very small town in southern Georgia. That's where we get our very refined southern accents from. Oh, here we go. Oh, one more thing. I got, got to keep talking. Um, I totally forgot to thank the Brookhaven Chamber of Commerce. Did I, did I thank them? I didn't. Well, I'm doing it now, and if I didn't do it before, thank you to the Chamber of Commerce for uh, helping with this event. This will be a great relationship going forward. I hope the Brookhaven Chamber of Commerce does the State of the City speech every year. We'll have more businesses. It'll be a way to promote this, the Chamber of Commerce. And I don't think you've made a plea for people to, to join the Commerce. And, okay. okay. <laughs> no. Please join the Chamber of Commerce. Yeah. Thank you for that, Mayor. I, I will tell you that, that the, the Chamber of Commerce is 
as almost not quite as old as the city. We were right behind the city, but we do a lot of things to work in concert with the city. There are a lot of things that they have asked us to do that we have um, taken on that maybe we're not necessarily in our wheelhouse, but I will tell you that it has been a fantastic learning experience for those of us that have been involved in those things. If, if you are someone that is content with sitting in the background and just complaining and not doing anything, get involved. That's how you make a difference. Let your elected officials know if you're not happy with something, don't just complain about it. Come to us, come to the Chamber of Commerce, we will represent you with a solution. Come to us with suggestions, we'd be happy to hear it. Come join us, uh, anyone have the date, Rick? Is it May 6th, we're having a social here downstairs? Do we know? Is it, I know our next, we're having a, a morning social that's gonna be here. Come join us for coffee on Vinnie Bucci, by the way. Oh, after that, oh, the next one is at 18.8, and then we're gonna have one here. So join us, join us for a cup of coffee. 18.8 Fine Men's Salon in town Brookhaven. Skip and Nancy Plez Narsing. Okay. Thank you so much, Mary Ellen, for keeping me on task there. Um, but come join us and let us hear. We always have people stopping by to, to uh, um, come and, and, and you will have access to the elected officials and the chief of police, Gary Endor, has been there and Maria has come, et cetera, et cetera. So with that being said, as citizens, we would ask for you to come forward and participate in, in the modeling of this city as we move forward. So I would like to thank you all again for coming out tonight, conclude on time, actually a little bit early, Thank the mayor and his family for coming out tonight and preparing this. And thanks for everybody that had a hand in this. Thank you, Marie. Thank you, everyone who worked behind the scenes. Thank you so much. Have a nice evening. Safe home.